This is Eyewitness News with Bill Butel, John Johnson for Kaidi Tong, plus Eli Zarat, Dr. Bill Gutch for Storm Field, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening, I'm Bill Butel. Tonight there are many unanswered questions surrounding the death of a two and a half year old boy in Queens. He died during a visit to a dentist, and there have been investigations begun. Garrett Glazer details this mystery for us right now. At the office of Forest Hills dentist Philip Howard this morning, they weren't taking questions. Can you give us his lawyer's name? Cops are here. No, Cops. Can we talk to his lawyer? Not even his lawyer's name? You want us to leave? Meanwhile, friends and family came to pay respects at the Forest Hills Gardens home of two-and-a-half-year-old Rifa Setiono today. He died following efforts to revive him after breathing troubles at Dr. Howard's office yesterday. The family is prominent in New York's Indonesian community. Relatives and friends referred our questions to the family's New York attorney, but efforts to reach him were unsuccessful. Police have a lot of questions. Why would a two-and-a-half-year-old boy be having his teeth filled? Why would the dentist use Valium and Pentothal as an anesthetic? And why would the dentist reportedly have slammed the door in the face of arriving paramedics and refused to let them in? At the 112th precinct today, police were not saying much. State investigators and homicide detectives from the Queens DA's office say they're looking at the case as well. It will be uh, the responsibility of my office to determine whether the... Uh, the uh, uh, activities by uh, Dr. Howard uh, were uh, proper and competent and, and done according to the scope of uh, authorized uh, dentistry. Results of an autopsy have not yet been released. Investigators want to know whether there's been any criminal wrongdoing, and they expect to have some answers within 10 days, which doesn't help the grief much tonight for one Queen's family whose two-and-a-half-year-old is gone. In Forest Hills, Garrett Glazer, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.